Hi guys and welcome to Investor's Guide to the Galaxy. It's your host Alex Ionescu. Tesla stock price 681.79 it's up 1.24% today. Year to date is down 43%. Past year is up only 0.43%. Today I'm going to share with you some amazing footage of Giant AI Secret Laboratory where they are working on universal worker robot that can learn fast a factory job and do it. Giant AI is a small company with a small budget for research and development but they have people that are good at artificial intelligence. And according to Adrian Keller, founder of Giant AI company, to make a smart robot, you need to have good AI software, not just good hardware. Because many companies in the past tried to manufacture factory robots to do all sorts of jobs, and they failed because they didn't have good enough software. Why I'm telling you this? Because can you think of a company that is good at artificial intelligence software? Yeah, that's right. That company is Tesla. So, if you look if you look at the progress of this small budget company, you can get a glimpse of what Tesla Optimus robot will be capable of. This is just my opinion, but I think the difference between Tesla and Giant AI is that Tesla will use its customers to do the research and development of the robot, exactly how it's doing with Tesla cars and FSD software. Tesla will sell a bad working humanoid robot to people and then it will gather data about this, the mistakes they make in the real world and improve the robot over time. Giant AI is trying to teach the robots in the, their laboratories and then sell them to customers to use them. They have also an approach where they can teach the robot with human operator but still Tesla will have millions of robots on the streets learning, sending back data to Tesla and improving every day and giant AI progress will be much slower with research and development just in the laboratory with 10 robots. So if you think about this robot, why don't people make robots out of plastic, you know, in the past, right? And that's, that's because in the past the paradigm was the robot should be precise and it should do things in a repetitive way. But if you think about environments that are designed for humans, this task is not exactly repeated twice ever, right? It's going to be a little different. You know, you're going to flip a burger, you're going to flip the next burger, it's going to be a slightly different burger being flipped in a different place, you know, whatever. The cheese might be in a stack and you got to just grab a slice. Whatever you're doing, it's going to be a little different every time. So this kind of paradigm of precision doesn't even work for normal human tasks. But if the paradigm is one of, of perception and dexterity, that's what we humans do. We look at what we're doing, we feel with our hands what we're touching, and we interact with our senses to constantly adapt for changes, not just in the environment, but our, our own bodies as well. So these robots that you see in the background here, every one of them is in some sense slightly different than every other one because they're manufactured using high volume consumer type processes. But it doesn't matter because the AI that controls them quickly learns to inhabit that body and quickly learns how to achieve a task using its own form, even though it's not a precision form, right? When it reaches with its hand, it looks at the relationship between its hand and what it's grabbing and constantly adapts based on what it sees. So it doesn't really matter if, you know, a moment ago I tried to reach forward and I ended up a half a millimeter short of where I thought I'd be. It doesn't matter. I just look at where I am and I do the right thing for, for the moment that I'm in. You can specifically have, you know, that's actually quite difficult. But one of the payoffs of this is that this arm, which is entirely made of plastic, all of the actuation is done through a kind of tendon-like fibers. So there are no motors inside of the arm. It makes the arm very light. It makes the robot naturally safe. And it means that the motors can actually be very small. Right? The, because, robot, the motors are down here, right? Uh, and these are transmissions, but the motors are slightly behind it. Got it. Right? Okay, and it's pulling on cables that go up through the arm and are, are pulling on That's the That's exactly right. And so this sort of cable-driven robot has been, you know, people have tried to build these things for many decades, but 
the difference here is that humans who are essentially cable driven, we rely on a very sophisticated control algorithm to make that work in practice. And people who have tried to build factory type precision robots in the past actually had a lot of trouble doing it with cables because they didn't have sufficiently advanced control algorithms to be able to, to manage that. And this is the punchline. This is the heart of the matter. By using a sufficiently advanced AI, we can build a cable-driven robot. By building a cable-driven robot, we can make it on the plastics and low-cost materials. By doing that, we can build something that is as sophisticated and capable as a human form for what is actually a tiny fraction of the price of even an industrial robot arm that frankly doesn't even come with a hand. Traditional robots. In this case, this, uh, what we call universal worker, is, is safe by design. It simply cannot hurt you, right? This entire arm weighs, you know, one or two kilos. It doesn't really have the capacity to harm you. It's not like a traditional robot arm that's made of steel and might weigh, you know, a hundred kilos, right? So this device is sort of safe by design. Here you can see the robot makes a mistake range not extremely heavy but that's actually quite typical for repetitive work one of the then learns from that mistake and next time it gets it right he'll in effect give the robot a, a treat in a digital sort of sense so what you see is the the robot is learning how to manipulate this kind of rigid object that's somewhat complex in shape and it's practicing th this uh, right? so these these universal workers, they've practiced all kinds of things and done all kinds of things and seen all kinds of things before they ever get to an installation. So then when it's time to actually learn a task at a, at a, at a factory, they need to be shown the task and then they practice it for a couple of hours and typically by the end of the day they can do whatever it is that the human worker was previously doing in that work cell. I don't know where you know other people are on these kinds of things, right? Tesla has been very public about their desire to build a humanoid robot. Their uh, conceptual robot is one with legs that also walks around. That presents a lot of really serious engineering challenges. Also power, though I suppose Tesla is a, you know, if you need a big battery in your robot, Tesla is a reasonable place to go. But their approach is, I think, more typical of a large company is to set a very complex omnibus approach that has sort of everything you want in it and then try to build that it may take a very large team and a large amount of time but the concept is to then finish with something that's very complete giant ai is a startup company we focus on things in a very priority basis why our robots don't walk most of our customers don't really pay their employees to walk around in fact they would prefer they didn't so we don't focus on that so we have many advantages. The robot can be plugged into a wall and has ample power for its AI activities. If you're gonna walk around, you don't have that. What we are doing is very distinct. I think it's distinct in the focus on price, the distinction to focus on manufacturability, to stick to the focus on very high volumes. We want to build something that's gonna radically change the labor, not just, for, not just now, but forever right over the next 20 years this problem that these uh, employers have of having trouble getting low skilled and unskilled workers is only going to get worse and worse and worse and you're seeing it on set you know, in the United States it's been a problem for a while you're now seeing this problem on set for example in China so our ability to make up for our shortage of workers by just buying stuff made in China well that's going away so the whole world is beginning to feel this so we want to produce a technology that's really globally transformative and that focuses our attention on certain particular aspects like you know manufacturability like how it is that you can make something that is low enough cost that it can compete with you know, all of the manufacturing that goes on in the world don't forget about the upcoming ai day on 30th of september when elon musk will hopefully reveal the optimus humanoid robot i'd like to know your opinion on all of this please leave a comment below if you like this video please smash that like button for the youtube algorithm so that other people like you see this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you that watch my videos. See you next time.